everybody, I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Here we go with part two with the fabulous Maggie Wheeler. The new show, which was sort of my first big real on-camera job, mm -hmm. um, before that I was just doing extra work every chance I got and doing voiceover because I, you know, I got lucky to sort of break into that industry when I was pretty young. Um, I, my sister's ex-boyfriend was dating a woman who was a writer who got a job on this show, the new show, and she said to me, my sister's ex-boyfriend's girlfriend said to me, would you like to audition for this show? Mm. And I said, yes, yes, why yes I would. And that is how that happened. So it had nothing to do with Hollywood or me, right, you know, right. going to a party or, or, you know, doing anything uh, intentionally to put myself in the right position. Mm -hmm. It was just, yeah. Like that. But was it's that so before? much about building relationships and you're only I always say like you're only a person or two away from the person you need to know or yeah. be or, or you know, it's it's, it's amazing. True. That's why you have to be so careful. It's I mean true. I always say I mean I'm from New York as well. Yeah. But I mean I always feel like New York uh, LA is a small town. I mean mm -hmm. because it happens all the times these worlds collide, you go, Whoo, thank goodness I didn't say that or you know, you kept that one in your yeah, journal right? because yeah, you just don't know. So you have to be true. so careful. It's so true. Okay, I wanna talk about Golden Bridge Choir. Okie dokie. So tell our wonderful viewers all over the world about this. And as you said, Emil Hassan Dyer is mm -hmm. your co-director. He is. Um, and just tell people about it. And I just think it's the whole group singing, your background, and, the, and when you went to camp and all of that. I just I love that. I'll tell the story. Give us okay. the whole story. So here's the deal. I, I grew up in New York City. I was lucky enough to be sent away to a summer camp that was run by Pete Seeger's brother. So I grew up singing folk music around the campfire and guitars and banjos and dulcimers. And I think that when I set off from there, I really kind of, in a, in a, in a, on a core level, I was always searching for the campfire. Mm -hmm. Like, where is mm -hmm. that campfire? Where is that feeling? Where are all those people harmonizing in the moonlight? So, you know, I sang in bands and I did all kinds of things along the way. Um, but eventually, I, I went to a workshop in upstate New York uh, at a place called the Omega Institute, where I now teach in, in, in the summer, uh, in August. Um, and I went there to teach to take a workshop being taught by Izai Maria Barnwell, who sings bass for Sweet Honey in the Rock, an incredible a cappella group. Oh, if you yeah. don't know them, look them up. So she's an amazing, extraordinary teacher. I was there the first time she ever taught a, a vocal workshop, an a cappella vocal workshop. And it was called, at the time, Black Choral and Congregational Song. Now it's called Building a Vocal Community. That's her thing, and she teaches it all over the world. Um, and it sort of set me on this path. And out of those group of people, uh, an a cappella group formed. We were called Sons and Daughters, and she mentored us for a while. And then I moved out here because I was in a, in a movie, that, an independent movie that was um, that was opening. I met the director at a restaurant, just because. Um, uh, and uh, and so I was coming out here for that. And then I met my husband, and I stayed. And I was sort of moping around without my music. And he said, you know, why don't you teach? And I thought, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. And then, but I knew I didn't really want to perform. So I so I did. I started these workshops once a month at the art gallery. And then uh, one thing led to another, and eight years ago I went up to Canada, to Victoria, to take uh, something called the Community Choir Leadership Training, taught by these wonderful people, uh, um, Siobhan Robinson and Dennis Donnelly, who have a great choir there. Mm -hmm. And out of that came this vision that I had to start this choir. Emil had also done the training. They introduced us. We started our work together eight years ago. So we have a non-auditioned community choir in Hollywood. I think it's the only non-auditioned choir so. here. And uh, right now we have 83 people in it. It's wow. intergenerational. We have kids there too. We have an art corner where the kids um, can do art and we also sing songs with them in the concerts that we do and we give all the money away um, from our concerts. So we, we do we good, do charity, good charity work with our, with our, with our music. <laughs> two concerts a year and it's turned out to mean so much to so many people and we travel and we do teach a cappella vocal workshops in other places we teach them yeah so I, we just came back from Pennsylvania we'll be actually going back to Pennsylvania in June to do another event and uh, we've done we've wor worked in Canada and we travel and whoever so wants cool. to bring us to wherever they are yeah. to teach uh, to do it's called uh, my, my workshop is called singing in the stream and and uh, yeah you stream. can and you can so find is there a anything. website people can go to maggiewheeler.net yep. is where you can find out about it and find out about what we do and we're, we'd love to come to your communities wherever you are in this country and beyond Fair. yes it's dot .net been. not dot .com because the dot .com is not you the dot .com <laughs> belongs to a Canadian murder <laughs> mystery writer because Whoa. she got there first <laughs> So well, I'm dot .net. But see, I think dot .net is better because you have this net 
I like you it. You spread that net. I yeah. think it's much more about you than exactly. calm. Exactly. That's right. So. Dot. Whoosh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I like it because it reminds me of Aquanet. <laughs> yes, 1983, Chuck. Nice. Yes. Love that stuff. Anyways. I love it. True or false? You celebrated your 16th birthday in a tent at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro. That is true. That is true. Wow. We're gonna How need did you some even details. find that out? I was there. No. <laughs> no. Um, that is so true. That's a quite a sweet 16 there, Maggie. Yeah, what were you doing in Africa? You know, <laughs> there's another part of my life. <laughs> if you look me up, you might find out that during uh, the last years of my high school, uh, uh, my time in high school, I helped to raise a chimpanzee in New York City. You did? I did. His Nim Chimsky is his name. There's oh, been Chimsky? a lot about I him in the Chimsky. press. We and love chimpanzees. We love little chimps. Yeah, so do I. And so I helped to raise Nim Chimsky and to take care of him. And I was really fascinated with primates, and and I wanted to go to Africa to um, to work with Jane Goodall to be uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, an intern with her. But uh, something rather dreadful had happened on the compound where she was uh, working that summer and my whole play plans fell apart. And so instead we looked into Putney student travel and I traveled with 13 or 14 other young people to Africa on my 16th birthday. And um, I had an incredible, incredible time there, incredible experience. As Amazing. it so happens, everybody, I, when we climbed Mount Kenya, I had terrible altitude sickness. I'd never had that Whoa. before. They sort of left me on a rock and oh. said, hey, you hang out. You'll be fine. We'll they see you later. You and they kept rock? going. Just don't lean over too far. Yeah. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's not... sure. You couldn't do that in this day and age. No, but that is why I was in the tent on my birthday because they oh, climbed they Mount left. Kilimanjaro and I could not go because I had such terrible altitude sickness on Mount Kenya that I stayed alone in the tent. For how long? Um, several days, but there was, <laughs> a, there was a cook there who, oh, okay. in the they cook's left tent. You they left you a cook. <laughs> yeah. You're okay. There was they food. said, think about what you've done and they left her there. That's no. right. Keep the, keep the fires burning so the oh. lions don't eat you at night and then there you have it and uh, and then and then my my tent mate got sick on the mountain as everybody did get sick on the mountain because when you climb Mount Kilimanjaro yeah. you get sick it's um, a little high yeah it's a little high but anyway she came back uh, after a few days so we were we were together uh, for the oh wow that's God. pretty birthday exciting weekend. you'll never forget that day no I will not <laughs> or those wow. few days I will not that's a birthday that's yeah, a birthday. quite something so Maggie what do you think are your strengths as an actor oh. on camera voice Oh my you goodness! Um, it's all acting after I all. I don't know. That's a hard question to answer. I, I think it's uh, you know I, I I hope that my strength is that uh, it, you know it all kind of loops back to some of the things that I said earlier. Mm -hmm. It's just about finding something true, mm -hmm. something authentic in whatever I'm doing, even if it's the craziest, goofiest, most ridiculous thing. You know, Janice is very crazy, goofy, ridiculous character, but I try to find something really true in that. Mm -hmm. She and was so likable. Nice. She, was. she was. So you do bring a little bit of you in there, see? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I try. Um, so I try. yeah, I, you know, I think that's my thing, you know, is that yeah. I try to find something that's like fundamentally deep down true, even though the exterior and all the stuff around it might just be bloody n insane. Mm -hmm. And so I hope that's what, what my strength is. Yeah. Good. That's Love a good that. strength. Yeah. You feel powerful right now? I feel powerful. Are you being yourself I right now? I'm so real. She I'm so real. Unzipped. This is not a character. She is. This is, we're getting, <laughs> this she's is that, real. She's, this she's is the real. real. Who's that guy over there? We're getting <laughs> the real. Yeah, it's like, whoa, is that an Indian? No. My <laughs> zipper. <laughs> um, all right, well, check it out. Okay. Last week, we had Fred Millamid on the show, mm -hmm. and he was, uh, he was uh, like you have been, too, one of the uh, cast members of... Uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, uh, yes. which I love. We love so it. can you tell us a little bit about what it was like working with Larry David and also Seinfeld? Because yes. you were on that too. You know, I hadn't seen Larry David in 20 years or something like that since I had done the Seinfeld episode. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you audition for Curb Your Enthusiasm, they don't tell you a whole lot. So they call you and they say, okay, we're, you know, we're going to bring you in. You're the wife of Larry's golf buddy and you're mad at him or something like You know, that's all you get. That's all you get. That's all you get. And then you get there. Oh, no, they said, to, uh, yeah, then you get there and they give you a strip of paper, a little piece of paper. And it says, wife of Larry's golf buddy says LOL um, is arguing with Larry. You know, that's all you get. And, like, and go. So I walked into the room and I was seeing Larry David for the first time in however many years. Yeah. And so I wanted to give him a hug. Now, I don't know, you know, probably somewhere in the rule book it says, you know, under Larry David, don't hug him. But no, I wasn't no really, I was like, touching. no unauthorized touching. But there I was I'm like, ah, can I hug you? And I stepped on his foot. So that was a good start. 
He um, would love that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but it was a really really fun audition. I like improv, and so I really really enjoyed being able to jump into the game mm -hmm. um, and uh, and and just and play with him. Now, I she's that character that I play on that show is very annoying because she says LOL all the time instead right. of laughing. Right. And so I had to sort of come up with some stuff. Now, I have teenage daughters, and at the time, one of them used to use the expression FML, which I won't, um, you know, my life are the last two words and the first mm -hmm. one we won't right. say. Um, and so I, I, I remember as I was driving there thinking, I'm going to use that. Yes. I'm going to use that. And so... Uh, you know, we're, 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 we're doing this thing and other people are, you know, in the game and we're all having this argument. And then I said, oh, you know, you think that's bad? Whatever I was saying, you know, oh, you don't like LOL, you don't like it, well, I'll tell you what, you know, and then I used, the, I used that expression. So I think that's probably what got me the job. And I said, yeah. you don't know what that means, this is what that means, you know. So that's how I, I think that's probably that's how I landed so that good. one. good. Was he cracking up? Yeah, they were laughing. And, I, you know, there's so, they're so much fun working on that show was mm -hmm. so entertaining mm -hmm. because... They crack each other up all day long. I, they have yeah. to. They do. Yeah. And so you can just sit back and get caught up in that infectious laughter. There's nothing more fun yeah. than when people How are many, spontaneously mm, We're going to get a little bit yeah. of the back. We're going back behind the scenes here. Back alley. How many takes typically to get one of these little scenes down since everybody's improvising, right? Uh, you know, they give you kind of a road map. They tell you what they want. You go for it. Then they go and they have a little conference. And then they say, okay, we're going to tweak this. We're going to tweak that. They come back. They say, okay, we like what you did up until this point. So do that again. But when you get here, do that. And then, you know, then you go back. So sometimes it could be three, four, four takes maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and they might turn the camera around or do something and, right, you know, right, right. set you back on, so you gotta on get the course. So yeah, you got to get going in there. Pretty quickly. You got to be wow. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Is it a blast? So much fun. I never wanted to leave, I have to say. Oh. That's the real truth. I was like, please, please, please. make me part of the <laughs> please, family. Please, please, please. <laughs> That's so cool. What about, what about working with uh, Seinfeld? What was that, what was that like? Um, Seinfeld was so great. I, you know, I had just come off of... Uh, I had done a, I had done this independent film called New Year's Day and it had won some awards and I was taking myself pretty seriously at the time and I was kind of you know n not on my comedy path for a little bit of a while and then I went in I had auditioned for Seinfeld a bunch of times and not gotten it and then I went in an audition for audition for that episode mm -hmm. and I got the job and um, uh, I remember going I remember showing up on the set. I, seeing these guys, realizing how much fun they were having and thinking, what was I thinking? I love comedy. I yeah. love Half yeah. Hour. This is yeah. my home. Yeah. And so it really kind of set me back on that on that path. Well, and you have been on, I mean, Will and Grace, Everybody Loves Raymond, Ellen. I mean, th I mean, that was such a trailblazing show. I mean, you've been on just literally when you list, when you think of the best sitcoms, yeah. you've been I there. You've been so on blessed I've been so and each one of them has some crazy weird like we were saying earlier mm -hmm. you know connect yeah. the dots story for how it happened the people who created Ellen's show these friends of mine when it was first on the air mm -hmm. um, were very very close friends a college friend of my very oldest friend so they knew my work and it was the Seinfeld episode that actually that inspired them to create that character for <gasps> me which they did. And then I had to jump through the hoops, the rings of fire, the rings of fire, however, oh my God. <laughs> and then I got the job, but um, I was fired from that job. It was my, I, 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 I had, a, today there was a big discussion. I was with a bunch of actors today and oh, everybody was telling their firing stories. You know, everyone's been fired. So anyway, that was my first firing. Mm. And, but it was after the first 13 or however mm -hmm. many we did. And um, they, I was replaced by the fabulous Jolie Fisher, who I love and adore. Um, but I don't remember why I'm telling you that, except to say, you know, just all these little circuitous connections that are made not necessarily in the service of show business that end right. up, right. you know. Exactly. Well, who were your, some of your heroes or mentors? Uh, you know, I grew up in, I grew up watching Lucy and Carol Burnett and oh, Sally gosh. Fields and like, you know, those were the people mm -hmm. that I watched and looked at and loved and wanted to be like. Mm -hmm. Carol Burnett. Oh my you know, gosh, yeah. Was my idol yeah and uh, and so I just I loved all those women of comedy when I was growing up and I loved Lucy and you know we had the Cuban thing and I was mm -hmm. why you know I love Ricky uh, so <laughs> that's so so that's where I started those are my roots you know and then the women of, of SNL you know all the way and all along mm -hmm. have just been so brilliant yeah uh, my mentors you know Anna Devere Smith was really really phenomenally instrumental in kind of you know Showing me what the rhythm, what the rhythm of language is in 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 the in the world, and also in my own 
Mm -hmm. self. Yeah. Um, and then also doing that, doing this independent film with Henry Jaglum this New Year's Day, which was my first movie. Um, and also that's largely improvised. There's a, there's a roadmap, but a lot of that material is improvised. In a way that really liberated me as an actress mm -hmm. to yeah. then go out back into the world and really bring more truth to all of the rest of the, the work that I, that was, you know, that I could yeah. put my skills toward. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so Maggie, you have been working steadily for a long time. It I appears that way. It <laughs> appears that way. It's not In this so crazy steady, but... business. Yeah. So what do you think have been the secrets to your longevity and your success? Wow. I, I would say for the first long period of time, optimism. <laughs> optimism. <laughs> Gotta have that. Optimism. Yeah. It's just like the door is closed, the door is I'm like, it's okay, I'll get the next ow, one. I'll get ow, the next one. Ow, yeah. ow, ow. You know, I was really like a super ball. You know, no yeah. there was no putting me down. Yeah. So I think that kept me in the game for a long time and I think that's the key thing, is kept me in the game. It yeah. takes forever. You know, it's a long road, this road. That's why mm -hmm. I say have a full life. It's a long road. You yeah. have to be mighty patient for those. In, you know, I, I think when I when I was younger, I thought, I can do anything. I can do everything. Why don't people know I can do everything? I'm so versatile. I can play a countess, and I can play a gnome, and I can play all, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Why won't they let me do it? And then I realized, oh, no, you don't get to do that. You just get to do this, and then you might get to do this you know, six or eight more times, maybe you're going to get lucky and you get to do that. But, you know, there's a lot of time in between yeah. these things. It looks, you know, you, you, you knit my career together and it's quite spectacular. But, you know, there's a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. So longevity, I think the secret to longevity is not quitting. Mm. Did you hear that? We're so stitch that on a pillow. <laughs> stitch that. Don't <laughs> quit. Don't oh, quit. Gosh. And of course, I will say, you know, as, as you often hear from lots of people in life around all kinds of things, it's like when you're finally ready to pack it up, yeah. when you uh. finally surrender, and you're like, I'm done. We're going to hold a little ceremony for my career. I'm going to do a little dance. I'm going to sing a little song. We're going to burn a little Throw incense. Throw petals on. Bing! Yes. You mm. have a job. Yeah. What? Yeah. You, know. you got a call back. I, I thought just that was put over. dirt no, on that thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. It's true. So it's true. is there now on that note, because this is important, a lot of people out there it def definitely experience this, right? Yeah. It's like even whether it's voiceover or on camera, mm -hmm. you're always either on call, mm -hmm. on hold, maybe you have the job, maybe you don't. And this is over and over and over. Is there something that you do, I don't know, meditate, drink, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> anything that, that helps you to just overcome the amount of rejection, if you will? You know, some days it hurts, and some mm. days you, you just, you know, there's a great saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, like, plaster it to the forehead, the mirror, the shoe, whatever. Uh, I don't know when I learned it, but the saying is, rejection is protection and direction. Mm. Rejection is protection and direction. And I needed that, yeah. you know, in, in some of my younger years where I thought that the job that I didn't get was the job that would have made me. And in fact, there were some significant roles that I didn't get mm -hmm. that led to people getting Academy Awards. And it was right. down to me and them. But, you know, then I have to look at the broader view of life, of my life, of, the, of what's, you know, what is the quality of my life. Mm -hmm. And I have to adhere to that adage that rejection is protection and direction. Yeah. I'm very fortunate. I've been married for 23 years. Oh, I have two right. beautiful children. I have a life, you know, yeah, I have so a you, rich life. You've been blessed. Yeah. I've been blessed. Absolutely. So, you know, it could have been that I could have won that I could have gotten that role and maybe I could have gotten that award or maybe I could have had that but that's just not my path right. so I just have to tell myself in those hard moments I think that is the meditation rejection yeah. is protection yeah. direction it's something it's you know it's not for you something else is for you and I there are times especially with voiceover I walk out of a booth and I'm like I was freaking genius you know it's mine <laughs> yes pretty deep, yeah. pretty, deep, pretty deep. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. They went with uh, a black man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They went with uh, Rodney Salisbury. <laughs> <laughs> well, and lovely. Lovely. Yes, we love you. Right. No, Rodney. but I think it's also because we don't know the, we can't see the whole picture. So it's yeah. just, you know, we're like right here. Yeah, you got to so have just trusting you gotta that. You got to have faith. You yeah. got to have faith. Yeah. But it's annoying. You know, it not to get what you think you yeah. write for, or not to get what you think you did the best job for. You know, there mm -hmm. are though there are days when I'm, you know, uh, uh, I'm certainly more affected by it than others. Right. Yeah. Right. That was good though. I like what you just yeah. said. That was really really cool. Well, on an up note. Yeah. yeah. What's going on with you? Um, that's actually happening. What do you have okay. going on right now? <laughs> yeah. That you can well, add. Well, I just recently shot an uh, an episode of Hot in Cleveland, Look which, yeah. which I was. Great. It was so much is fun. So I had fun? the best time. I was there on Betty White's 92nd birthday. Oh. Wow. So I was there for like this moment of TV history that just wow. was extraordinary. Thanks. I loved every moment of being so there. So cool. 
She's amazing. And she was the only person, by the way, at the table read. You know, we all sat down to read the <laughs> script on the first day. And there was Betty White at 92, no reading glasses. The rest of us <laughs> are like, I can't see. No. She's like, and I can see, what is that? I, I can read that over there. You know, she's had some kind of cataract surgery that's wow. made her into superwoman. She's bionic. She's bionic. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Juliet Mills was on the episode, too, and I grew up watching Nanny and the Professor. Oh, gosh, yeah, me too. <laughs> like, I, I went into her dressing room. She was in the dressing room across from me just to tell her how incredibly Aww. honored I was to be working with her. And as I began to say the words, Did you like, step on her the foot, too? No, no, I stayed in the door. <laughs> but the tears, like, I could feel like, the t like, I got to get out of here before this woman thinks I am Batch, it's crazy. <laughs> I just want to tell you, I'm so honored to be with you. Anyway, I love them. <laughs> I love those women. I love working with those women. All the women on that yeah. show are yeah, so that funny. Must have been a treat yeah, so that's great. Man. My choir is working towards its May 18th concert. Yay! We are raising money for the um, uh, for the Do Ubuntu campaign, which helps an orphanage in South Africa, an incredible mm. orphanage that works with uh, children who's parents have died of AIDS and also a lot of kids who are infected by HIV wow. and uh, it's a very very there's an amazing documentary called Angels in the Dust that tells the story of that particular orphanage yeah. so uh, the money from our May 18th concert will go to, to do you them. change how what do you who do you decide or how do you determine what where the charity is gonna almost always to. we do we give money to uh, the strong heart fellowship which is an incredible organization run by a woman named Corey Stern it helps to kind of identify r kids with extraordinary potential who are mm -hmm. living in really difficult situations mm -hmm. and to give them um, education and mentorship and really help them to develop and so um, she started that organization with some kids that were in a, a refugee camp in Ghana uh, that were that had fled from the from Liberia during the Civil War wow. and she's done some amazing amazing work so we do a lot of work with the Strong Heart Fellowship but every once in a while something else rises up and we follow it and so you know when the earthquake happened in Haiti we did mm -hmm. a concert for Haiti our last concert we did for a wonderful uh, young woman named Sophia Scorsese who suffered from a brain aneurysm and she's rebuilding her life and her mother used to be in the choir so we did we did that one for her and support uh, support for Sophia org is is her her um, her website and she's just trying to find alternative of therapies and things yeah. to get yeah. her life back together so we did that and then uh, I saw this documentary, Angels in the Dust, and I just knew right away yeah. that we needed to do this concert for them. And also, um, my, my choir is a member of something called the Ubuntu Choirs Network. And so when I saw the Do Ubuntu campaign, I just thought, it makes sense. Do it. Yeah. So it's that's what we're be. doing this time. There you go. You're good people. Wow, wow, wow. You are wow. good people. You too. Absolutely. What a I sweetheart. Know. We're never letting you just me. have like this beautiful heart. Beautiful. And you know what's funny is that when we first met you, that's the vibe that you put out. You know what I mean? You were totally real. You weren't wow. hiding anything. There was no guard. It was just this mm -hmm. beautiful person. What I still like to accomplish. Um, first of all, I really, really love, the, the real secret is I love voiceover. I just love it. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, it's where I started in a way, and I really always want to do more. So that is one of my goals, is to do more cartoon work. And um, you know, it, uh, it, it brings me a lot of joy. I really, really enjoy the work. So I always have my little, you know, my little, whatever, my little altar, my little <laughs> wish things, my la la, la cartoon, cartoon, cartoon. Um, you know, I love to do that work. So I hope to do more. Um, in terms of on-camera work, uh, you know, I, I never really, I, I never really form a, a particular vision or dream. I just kind of go where it takes me. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the music, that's uh, something that means a great deal to me and I love to do that work. So I hope to really continue to do it and to grow it and to sort of take it to more places and, and visit more communities and really kind of reintroduce the, the incredible power of singing in community, which is, which is really a healing experience. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. really love to, I love to spread that. Yeah. And working with Betty White on a regular basis. That too. That you want to do, <laughs> Yeah, right? I want to go back to hot in Cleveland. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So and to Kirby Enthusiasm. Call you, call yes. you up and say, we'd like to have you as a regular. <laughs> yes. Because yes. Betty requested you. Betty loves me. She loves Betty me. Betty loves you. <laughs> and we love you. We Thank love you. you. Thank you so much Thank for you. taking your time to come out and Thanks, party with Maggie. us here at Thank the Buzz so Weekly. You, so you are so awesome. Thank you, are you so much. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. I'd love to come back. And we will see you guys next week. Hey everybody, I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. What an amazing time I had. These people are so fantastic, so wonderful, such a comfortable place to hang out and talk about life and love and other things. Well, that concludes our segment with the awesome Maggie Wheeler, but we'll be back next week with a brand new episode of B.O. Buzz Weekly. Yes, we will. And keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at B.O. Buzz Weekly. Take care, everybody, and just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little, little buzz. buzz.